Welcome, Patriots. All right, I decided to do something special for all of my United States citizens for our 4th of July. It's been crazy around the world, and it has been especially crazy here in the United States of America. I happen to live in Washington State, and uh, I happen to love the 4th of July, which means that I have to leave the state in order to have a real patriotic holiday, which kind of irritates me. So I hope to help you have a better 4th of July this year by helping you with some special secret singing tips of how to sing some of our best patriotic songs better, faster, the Voice Club way. I'm Kim Snyder, professional singer, certified vocal coach, and creator of The Voice Club Method. I have the world's most unique vocal education. And with that, I do what pretty much no one else does. That is teach you how to sing better, faster, and actually know how you did it, because you deserve to know. Right now, it's time to dig into one of our very favorite patriotic songs and learn how to sing God Bless America Better Faster. Okay, if you've seen me chart some other songs out before, you've noticed that we do things a little bit differently around here at The Voice Club, and you'll see that I've done that in this song. I'm gonna let you follow along with me on the lyric sheet to show you exactly how I mark my lyrics for vocal improvement. I'll show you some of the places that almost all of us will fail in this song, regardless of key or gender of the person who's singing, and how to make it easier, okay? now. If you look at the way anybody else sings a song, you'll find that the first thing you do is we'll look up the lyrics and you'll learn the notes and then you try to fix the really awkward spots. That's not the way we roll here at The Voice Club. So I'm gonna give you like the first step of a process that I take our singers through. If you wanna go from just singing a song to being a really great singer, there is one huge difference and that is how well you communicate the story of the song. And that all begins with understanding what the story meant to the original writer. Patriotic music is really fun to look at. Have you ever heard of the name Irving Berlin? You may have that name associated with White Christmas because he authored that song and hundreds of other songs that we have as really old standards in America. Now, at the time that he began writing this song, he had already witnessed World War I. The rise of Nazi Germany was going on and America was just about to enter into World War II. God Bless America is one of the shortest songs in American writing history. I'll show you that in a minute. But the goal of this story was to inspire his fellow Americans to live in harmony with each other. And that is a timeless message, is it not? Just so you don't idealize the past America too much. There were issues when he came out with this song. First of all, he didn't really write it to like be a big national anthem. He just really wanted to inspire Americans to bond together and really appreciate what we had in our very unique country. But before long, both Republicans and Democrats kind of seized the song as their own theme and then they began fighting about it. See, things haven't changed that much. A group of Democrats said, well, how can you say that God should just bless America? Shouldn't it say God should bless every nation on the earth? And then a part of that group decided that because Irving Berlin was an immigrant, he shouldn't be the one that would have the voice to say anything about our country because who was he to know? At the end of the day, all of that disagreement faded away. Like, believe it or not, the things we're going through today, I believe actually eventually will. And we will come together again as one united nation. That's what happened when this song came out. Then it kind of faded away into history until we went through 9-11. And it was Celine Dion who sang this song as a tribute to the heroes of 9-11 that brought this song back into current pop music and has since been covered by tons of major artists. Now, I'm gonna walk you through why this song is difficult to sing and how you can make some super quick fixes to make it easier. Now, that's where the original story came from in the author. But when you sing this song, your job is not about remembering the words and the notes. That is like step A out of step A, B, C, D before you even get to step one. Once you get into the real purpose of singing a song, you have to say, this is what the song was written about. What inspires me to sing this message? And what does my story mean when I sing it? That means you retell the story in your own way. That affects how we style the song. That means all the bells and whistles you might add, whatever those are. 
And that should be really what we're focusing on, not if we're gonna reach the note or not. The most important step in taking lyrics off a lyric site and putting them into story form so that your brain can begin to learn how to communicate the message is to take out all those stupid commas and write it out in sentences. I'm gonna show you how I did that. Now, if we take all the lyrics of God Bless America and we write them out as sentences, we have five sentences for an entire song. Five sentences. Should be easy, right? Not always, and I'll show you why. If you have trouble singing this song, there's a lot of reasons. And I am not going to try to pretend there is a quick fix for every voice, for everything, because anyone who tells you that is just wrong. Our voices are absolutely individual, completely unique. And all of our baggage from the way that we've learned to sing other things and the things that we've gotten wrong or the things that were wrong that were taught to us, and there's a whole bunch of those, impact how we try to approach notes. We don't usually know this is even going on until we open our mouth and something unlovely pops out. What I'm gonna give you today are some very quick tips that are gonna make this easier to sing so that you can focus on telling the story of the song. And trust me, there's a whole bunch more that can be fixed to make this super easy and really effective. But let's start with the basics. If you get a chance to sing God Bless America and you have the opportunity to put it in any key that you want, by the way, there is no magic key, here's something really interesting to know. If you sing a song off the top of your head and just let your brain pick any key, chances are very, very high that your brain will pick a key that is best for your voice. Did you know that? Your brain doesn't want you embarrassed, so it's pretty good at picking a key. If you get a chance to sing through a song, don't listen to the karaoke track, don't get sheet music, just start singing the song and you'll find a key that is really good for you. Have someone plunk it out if you don't know how to play an instrument or plunk it out yourself and ta-da, there's a good key for you. If you're stuck with a karaoke track, you're gonna find that you're gonna feel probably less successful singing this song. And I want you to know, it's not because you can't sing, it's because the way that you approach certain notes, put in that key, are making your failures come to the surface more often. There is no magic key. So for the sake of this one, I'm gonna sing it in a bunch of different keys, okay? You'll get to see how we can fail different places. Where we fail in our voice is dependent on how we approach notes how often we approach notes that way, which way the melody is going, and about 50 other things. But there are some really key things that we all have in common with mistakes in this song. God bless America. This is usually the easiest part of the song. Those of you who know a little bit about what we teach at the Voice Club will know what that means, and that means you are good to go. Any song that starts with the letter G has just given you an anatomical advantage. Huge. God bless America, land that I love. Now, if you've been stuck in a key that you haven't chosen, which a lot of singers are, karaoke or someone's got sheet music and they're like, I only know how to play in this key, or you're playing it yourself, you might be stuck in God bless America, land that I love. Okay you're gonna have problems right around here. If you sing this line and you find that it feels uncomfortable, it might start easy and it starts feeling uncomfortable, this bugger is your first problem. I want you to think like a Scottishman. And I want you to think L-U-N-D. God bless America, land that I love. If you do that, it will solve another problem you're gonna have on love. Because if we go, land that I love, love gets even harder because it goes higher. Regardless of the key that you're in, if it doesn't feel easy on the first phrase, if it does, don't do this. If it doesn't feel as easy as you want it to, then make this little change. And you're not gonna say, land that I love. Uh, you're just, your brain's gonna look at that and it's gonna cut the difference. God bless America. If I went, land that I love, I'm going to feel awful about that. I'm going to feel like everybody else feels awful about that. But even if I'm stuck up there and I go, God bless America, land that I love, I'm going to feel more successful. It's going to make everybody feel a little bit happier about it too. And that's important because it's the story, not the singer, that is the point of a good communication through music. All right, let's go and take this low. God bless America, land that I love. I got no problems, I'm a great singer. It doesn't even hurt, it's easy. Great, wonderful, don't do that. Let's go to the next line. Stand beside her and guide her 
Through the night with the light from above. Oh, here's a little secret. See this line? Uh, through the night with the light from above. Originally, Irvin Berlin wrote this. Stand beside her and guide her to the right with the light from above. That's what he wrote. But then the Republicans and the Democrats started fighting about it, and he changed the lyrics before the final recording came out. And he's like, no, this is not my goal. It's supposed to unite us, not divide us. Songwriters, sometimes we just have to lead by example for everyone else. So, stand beside her and guide her. We have two potential problems. Let's say you get to this line, and this line is starting to feel a little uncomfortable. By the way, when you're practicing a song, if it feels a little uncomfortable, you can take that feeling of uncomfortability or failure, however it sounds and feels to you, and multiply it by about three times. That's how bad it's gonna be when you sing it in front of other people. Because once nerves set in, it will make the tendencies that you have much more pronounced. You're gonna feel it sooner, you're gonna not like it, and if you don't like what's coming out of your mouth, you will never be able to communicate the story through the notes, which is the point of singing. Besides, it's a lot of fun. Let's say you get to the second line. You're fine in the first line, you get to the second line. Stand beside her. This is the first little devil in there that we're gonna fix. And we're gonna go like this. Be sod. B-E-H dash S-A-W-D. Now, there are a few other coaches out there will do vowel narrowing and some different tricks to do things. That is not what I'm doing here. What I'm doing is I'm finding the most common failure points and I'm just giving you one of a multitude of tools that you can visually put into practice fastest to make this a much easier feeling song to sing. It's gotta be easy to be right. When we sing the way that our anatomy is created to sing, it feels easy, even on the big notes. It really does. Doesn't feel easy? There's something going on. There's a wrench in the system. So this is just one of the ways that, at the voice club method at least, we get singers past those obstacles. Stand beside her and guide her. Now if you sing, stand beside her, you're also gonna have a problem with, and guide her. It'll sound like you're singing like this. And then you may as well have a banjo. I mean, maybe that's the festival you're at. I don't know, but you don't want to sing like that. But if you will tell your brain, besod. The word is besod, not b-side. Stand beside her and guide her. This one may cause you a little trouble. Here's a little backup. G-A-W-D. And guide her. Through the night with the light from above. Now, the first one should fix it if you got a little obstacle. If you got a bigger obstacle, uh, the obstacle just means that you're not approaching the note the way the anatomy is created to. Usually, I find very most oftenly because we've gotten singing advice and or training from someplace that has given you a habit that actually has caused you a new problem you didn't have before. <sighs> There's so many of them. Then you're gonna find these other things. So every note that I give you, you're gonna put it into practice. You don't have to fix every single thing that I'm writing down. But if you continue to have a problem with this line, add the next one and the next one and the next one, okay? If the first one fixes it, great, go ahead. Stand beside her and guide her. If you sing the rest of this line and you find that you still have a little bit of discomfort or worse, through the night, N-A-W-T with a light. Now, you'll notice I didn't say, stand beside her and guide her with a knot from a watt from above. But when we read them phonetically like this, it gives your brain some new information, which actually takes it out of, quote, singing rules that you've learned other places that are actually causing your problems. You know, I work with some singers that have never had a singing lesson before, and they've still picked up on a whole bunch of bad information that's causing them to sing in a much more difficult way and not nearly as easy or as well as they can just because of that. So I'm willing to bet you got a bunch too. I know I did. Way too much bad teaching. Now let's go to the next line. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam, God bless America. 
well, okay, this, I'm just going to jump ahead here. When you're telling a story, especially if you're like a rambler, let's just say like I am, say, ah, oh, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam, God bless America. I wouldn't stop and do a, oh, the mountains white with foam. God bless America. Think about songs as stories. That's what they're intended to be. So don't ever stop and breathe here. It's too yummy. It doesn't make sense. Never put a pause where the story does not demand it. It's one simple key to be a super great, better singer. Another little tip. Did you know that an audience will forgive you for missing a note or not being so great on it when you communicate well? Communicating a story is actually more valuable to your audience than hitting every note perfectly. That's why we teach singers to remove those obstacles and focus on the story. So, from the mountains, usually is pretty easy, to the prairies, might have a little problem here, to the prairies. Watch yourself in the mirror. If when notes go up, your head goes up, your ears go up sometimes, your trapezius sometimes will go up, your whole body will pop up like whack-a-mole, then you got an obstacle and this will help you. Um, to the prairie, Perez, to the prairies, to the oceans, white, this one you'll recognize, what? White with foam. Here's what happens when your brain sees this other word, which is completely different from the way that your brain wants to say this word. It's gonna cut the difference and it will come out. White with foam. Sometimes I'll walk through a song with a student and I will actually sing it phonetically and they will hear the other word. Your audience will hear it, but you will be much more comfortable singing the note. So let's take it from the beginning and we'll sing it lower. God bless America, land that I love. I didn't narrow that because it's not a problem. It's easy down there for me. But when they put me in, God bless America, land that I love. Then I say change the key or else I go, land that I love, stand beside her. Here's a little thing you probably don't know too. Did you know that when your anatomy is unleashed of all those singing obstacles so that it can do what it was actually created to do, you can sing a song in way more keys than you would ever imagine. But the thing is, you'll find that you like the tone and the quality of your voice better in some keys than others. Never worry about singing a song in the same key as somebody else sings it in. They picked a key that they like their voice best in, and you should do the same. Again, how do you find that? Let your brain do the work for you. Your brain's pretty good at picking a good key for you. But let's say I'm forced to sing this because the band can only play it in one key or I have a track. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her with a light through the night from above. I did it backwards, but same words. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans wide with foam. Now, if you have to stop and take a breath there, take a breath. But if you find that you're singing that and it's just feeling yummy, don't let that carry you into the emphasis for the next line. Not only is it better communication skills, your vocal anatomy is like an engine. And when we keep singing and we don't stop, that engine is revving. Every time we stop and take a breath, it literally goes, Ugh. And we have to get it all going again. Every time you breathe, we're closing off one of the pipes to move to the other and the whole anatomy has to shift. So if we can keep going and it feels good, we don't want to take a breath until we absolutely have to. We have much more to work with. The machine is running. Never breathe unless you absolutely have to. And if you find you have to breathe a lot, it's not an air problem. It's a vocal muscle problem. Don't believe what you heard. I would never want to sing this song up in that key. But if I had to, God also blessed me with a G on the beginning of that word. And it is the best letter in the entire alphabet that you can use to engage vocal muscle. God 
bus I'll never call my home sweet home. Now I'm singing this in this awful uncomfortable key just because you're probably gonna be stuck in an uncomfortable key and why should I get off the hook? You're probably gonna be asked or at least expected of someone else or in your own head to go my home sweet home God bless America and hopefully you won't be up there so it'll be much more fulfilling to your own ear and then you'll enjoy telling the story more and that fires up everybody else's patriotic sensibilities that's what it's about God bless America my home this one might cause you a little trouble so let your brain take a look at M-A-W. My home, sweet home. Now, if you've heard any of my other videos, you will know that H is your enemy. G is the best letter we have. H actually makes your vocal machine stop. <sighs> go, ah. Uh. Now go, <sighs> Now do them exactly like that at the same time. You can't. Uh, uh, they are two different physical combinations of parts in your vocal anatomy. So we need to make H as tiny as possible. My home sweet home. Make your H tiny if you have trouble getting into home. You might practice it without the H at all. My home sweet home. My home sweet home. God bless America. Add in a teeny bit of H when you're comfortable with it. But if you have trouble going into that home sweet home, going up, H is your enemy and it is undermining that beautiful voice. Don't let it. Now we'll jump down to another normal key. God bless America, my home sweet home. Okay. The this feels like we've got to the end of the song unless we have to repeat this all again which in this song you probably have to do because there's five sentences in the song you might think you've gotten to the easy part but you haven't because we have another h and another h which we have here but we had a different melody so it caused some different problems you might think you're doing fine but when we get to this last repeat it is traditional you certainly don't have to do it this way but it's traditional to go my home hang on to that sweet <laughs> add all your bells and whistles however you're gonna do that song if you want to hang on to home h is your biggest fiercest enemy so practice this again with no h until you can go my own my yo i'll put this here my Oh, my home. Do this little test. Go ahead and sing my home with the H in it and just count in your head 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, how long you can hold that. My home. Now I can do it because I've learned to do it. So I'm not going to, it's not going to have the same numbers, right? But go ahead and do that and then sing my home and then count how long you hold that one. You will be astonished. What you've done is just put into practice a little something that helps your engine to keep running. Just a little trick and there are tons of them. I don't want singers to rely on tricks or tips. I want singers to know how to unlock the machine. You don't have some crappy old Ford engine, not a Ford hater. You have a Ferrari engine. The problem is all the other advice and tips and honestly copying other singers and attempting to do things on our own has caused a bunch of wrenches in our engine. And that's why it is more difficult to sing than it should be. And because it's difficult and it doesn't feel good, we don't like how it sounds. And when we don't like how it sounds, communicating this beautiful patriotic message is the last thing on our minds. And if you have to sing in front of people, and that is true, which by the way, it is true of most singers in the world. You have just robbed your audience of the entire goal of being in front of them with a song. If you'll put these tips into practice, you will find that some of those obstacles will start to let go a little bit. Now, it's not going to give you what you need to understand why those obstacles are there, how they keep creeping up and changing different places and undermining you. But 
it will start to get you to feel what it's like when your voice doesn't have as many obstacles thrown into the vocal engine. And that should make you feel pretty good. And at the end of the day, it's all about saying, this is our country. This is our home. Despite the fact that political parties will fight and tear things apart forever, will make us change lyrics or whatever else, because everybody's got to fight about something. We, the people, are America. And this is our home, sweet home. Happy Fourth of July. Now get out there and sing. <laughs>